Canon Brandon's lawn is perfect for kite launching. We must have your sky kite. Find them pretty ribbons. John, set that in there. Richard, can they could be there. Imagine my surprise, Mrs. Ashwood, when Charlotte and her lord and master appeared with our cousin Lucy. The last person I expected to see. She probably came to join in the fun. For there are no funds for such luxuries at home, poor thing. I've not seen you for so long, dear Mrs. Jennings. I couldn't ah. resist the opportunity. Oh, you sly thing! It was the Mrs. Dashwood she wanted to see, not oh. Delaford, Mama. I have heard nothing but Miss Dashwood, this, Miss Dashwood, that, for I don't know how long. <laughs> and what do you think of them now you do see them, Lucy? My mother has talked of nothing else in her letters since you came to Barton, Mrs. Dashwood. Mr. Palmer, are they not the very creatures she describes? Nothing like. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Mr. Palmer, do you know you are quite rude today? He used to be an MP, you know, Mrs. Dashwood, and it is very fatiguing for him, for he is forced to make everybody like him. He says it is quite shocking. <laughs> I never said anything so irrational. <laughs> Mr. Palmer is so droll. He's always out of humour. <laughs> no! Here he comes! Now you shall see Charlotte. <laughs> My daughter Charlotte, Mr. Palmer. How do you do? And our little cousin, Miss Lucy Steele. <laughs> Welcome to our party, Miss Steele. Turn about. Come round, boys. Come round. Come round. I know Mr. Willoughby extremely well. Not very spoken. May I beg a seat beside you, Miss Dashwood? Mama, I've so longed to make your better acquaintance. I've heard nothing but the highest praise of you. I would be delighted. But Sir John and Mrs Jennings are too excessive in their compliments. Oh, I am sure no. to disappoint. No, for it was from quite another source I heard you praised. And one not at all inclined to exaggeration. <laughs> what can this be? Colonel <laughs> Brandon here. Over here. Where is he? There he is. My horse, quickly. What's the matter, Brandon? I asked away to London. No, impossible. Imperative. But, but, but we're all assembled. We, we, we cannot later. picnic at Delaford without our host. Go up to town tomorrow. Well, wait until we return and start then. You'd not be six hours later. I cannot afford to lose one minute. Forgive me. I hope it's nothing serious, Colonel. Oh, upon my soul, this is all very unusual. I'm Just when I was the Frailty, thy name is Brandon. There are some people who cannot bear a party of pleasure. They're a very wicked pair. Colonel Brandon will be sadly missed. Why? When he is the sort of man that everyone speaks well of, and no one remembers to talk to. Exactly. Nonsense. Colonel Brandon is very highly respected at Barton Park. <laughs> well, which is enough censure in itself, hmm? Really, Willoughby. <laughs> Come, come, Mr. Impudence. I know you and your wicked ways. Oh. Come, Miss Dashwood. Reveal your bow. Reveal him, I say. Let's have no secrets between friends. Let me winkle them out of you. No, I do declare, Miss Marianne. If I do not have you married to the Colonel by tea time, I shall swallow my own bonnet. As if you could marry such a character. Why should you dislike him? Because he has threatened me with rain when I wanted it fine. <laughs> He has found fault with the balance of my high flyer, oh, and I cannot persuade him to buy my brown mare. Oh. If it will be of any satisfaction to you, however, to be told that I believe his character to be in all other respects irreproachable, then I'm ready to confess it. And in return for such an acknowledgement that must give me some pain, you cannot deny me the privilege of disliking him as much as I adore. This cottage. I have great plans for improvements to it, you know, Mr. Willoughby. Now that I will never consent to. Not a stone must be added to its walls. Were I rich enough, I would instantly pull down Coombe Magna and rebuild it in the exact image of this cottage. The dark, narrow stairs of Pokey Hall and a fire that smokes, I suppose. Especially the fire that smokes. But then I should be as happy at Coombe as I have been at Barton. But this place has one claim on my affections that none other can possibly share. 
Promise me you'll never change it. I'm honored that so fair and virtuous a lady should compromise her honor by seeing me to the gate unaccompanied. <laughs> that is exactly what Eleanor would say. And she would be right. Miss Marianne, will you do me the honor of granting me an interview tomorrow? Alone. <laughs> will it be? We're always alone. Yeah, but there's... There's something very particular I should like to ask you. Of course. I shall ask Mama if I may stay behind from church. Thank you. Until tomorrow, then. <laughs>